What's good, everybody? Hope everybody is enjoying their Friday. Um, so I just wanted to talk about something um, that I think is very, very important. Um, I saw a video um, with a gentleman just talking about how um, he came across um, two young boys. One was 19 and 18 homeless um their mothers both kicked them out of the house at 18 19 years old and had them to fend for themselves and you know it, it was powerful the whole the whole video really moved me because i was like man you know i have a i have a a 19 soon to be 20 year old daughter and I also have an 11 year old son. And so um, I guess what was so, um, this, what's up Darnell? So what was so just um, disturbing to me was that parenting thinking um, that after 18, I've done my job. You now have to fend for yourself, whether you want to or not. You've got to go. you got to get out of here. I've done my job. I've done my part, what I legally have to do, which is feed, clothe you, and shelter you for 18 years. So why I was so moved by this is because, like I said, I have my own baby girl who's 20, you know, or soon to be 20 next month. And she's a mother now. You feel what I'm saying? And my concern is if we begin not being mindful <laughs> that sometimes we must incubate our children. Sometimes we must make a decision that even though our children are 18, you know, and legally, yes, we have a responsibility to parent them, meaning provide food, water, shelter, and care for them until the age of 18. That is not a cutoff point. You will forever be a parent. That never changes. You will die being a parent. You will die taking care of your child. I don't care what you do. You will be a parent forever. Okay? So what bothered me is that this parent shoved out their kid. Two of them. She, he, like I said, there was two young men, 18 and 19. She just shoved them out the door. Get out. You're 18. I did my job. And I'm like, hold on. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> As parents, yes, we are legally responsible to take care of our children until the age of 18. And we are legally responsible to make sure they have food, clothes, shelter, all of that until the age of 18. Yes, by law. But understand something, in this day and age, <laughs> and you're a parent, you have kids, You all, we all know that after high school, our children are not already uh, equipped to be in a job that's able to financially stabilize them to the point where they can take care of themselves at 18. Just come out of high school and go and buy their home and take care of themselves and take care of their family. That's not how it is right now. And even when our children go to college, our children still have to be incubated. It's still our due diligence as a parent to make sure that our children are incubated. We have to make sure as parents that we are being mindful of what we're doing with our young people. Because really, it, it truly will be, understand something, when we make a decision to shove our child out of our homes or shove our children out to the wolves, that that will be forever remembered by that child. And I don't care what you do. If your child is ever homeless or you are ever homeless, that forever stays in your soul. That never changes. That never changes. 
And it's an embedded memory that you truly do not want to have to have your child or your children experience. You want to see your kids, man, flourish and, and, and be the best version of themselves. So, you know, for me, I just wanted to express how important it is that, yes, our due diligence as parents is to make sure our kids grow and become their best version of themselves, you know, by 18. But our parenting never stops. We continue to parent for life. But the way we parent is quite different. You know, when they're small, we, we, we're all over top of their back. We're making sure the child's doing what they need to do, going where they need to go, being, being concerned about their well-being. So we're very hands-on parents when they're small. As they age, our ch you know, our parenting kind of shifts a little bit. It changes a little bit. We have to then kind of allow them to bump, get bumps and bruises and allow them to go into different activities and sports and things of that nature and allow them to explore some things that maybe they start to take interest in. But it's very important that we don't just shove our kids out here to the wolves, man. And it just really bothered me. It's like, you know, we, we never stop being parents. I don't care what we do. We don't stop. We, um, we become more suggestive. You know what I'm saying? As they age, we're no, we're no longer um, being so hands-on with them and, and, and telling them what to do. However, we're strongly advising or strongly encouraging them to make certain decisions. And that's important. You know, um, having an older daughter, it's not easy. You feel what I'm saying? And, um, you know, when I was, when I was 19, I, I was, I was, you know, strong willed, independent and wanted to have my own and do my own thing. So of course I made decisions, maybe that everybody else I would not suggest does, including my own child. I would not suggest that she makes the decisions I made, but I think it's important that we don't lose sight that just because by law we're supposed to, uh, take care of our child until 18 and then that's it no you take care of your child until you see it is necessary but we take care of our child in different ways though we don't always have to hover over their back we don't always have to be all up in their business we could just be parenting and allow we have to allow them to grow in their own um purpose allow them to grow to their to their exquisite self and once they become then just always respect that but we don't never stop being parents i don't care what we do um hell you know I, i'm a child of my dad and, and my mom that's deceased now but my mom and dad never stopped parenting i mean my dad calls me and Matter of fact, was teasing me a little bit today. You know, like, well, what's going on with all these naked guys all over your poetry page? It's like, well, um, see what had happened was, you know, so <laughs> we had our own joke. But anyway, you know, I, I'm still going to be my dad's daughter. So I have to be mindful of that. You feel what I'm saying? So you never stop being a parent. It's always going to be you know, your job is always going to be very important that you impart in them as best you can, your wisdom, your understanding, your encouragement, your appreciation, your love, your, you're always going to want to learn forgiveness of your children, you know, because they're going to be up doing a lot of things that they're bumping their head up against different things. And you're like, why did you make that decision? Or why would you do this? Or what were you thinking here? And so as a parent, it's hard sometimes um, not to be like all over their back about stuff, but it's important that when we do sit back and see that they're, they're making decisions that are good decisions, we should be encouraging them and, and, and in doing the encouragement, telling them, no, you're doing a great job, you know, or telling them, Hey, you know, maybe you want to change that decision you're making, maybe do something different. But I was just concerned because I just don't want parents to believe. And this is this is probably more for the new parents. The, the parents that really are still kind of wet behind the ears or really haven't had experience yet. Understand, it doesn't stop. 
you're forever going to be a mama. You're going to forever be a daddy. I don't care what you do. <laughs> it's just not going to change. You're always going to be that. So understand you've got to be creative in your style of parenting as you age. As your child ages, you got to keep up with the masses. You got to know what's going on currently in the era where we're in. You got to know what's going on in the workforce, what's going on uh, educationally. You got to learn what's going on, you know, recreationally. So you're able to keep up with what the what's the now, what's going on, what music are they listening to, what what what's going on in their era, what's going on in their era, because even though we are parents now and may not have the taste for their stuff, or I'm you know I'm not really into that, or I'm not really into this because we just outgrew a lot of their things. We still need to be aware of them whether we have a taste for those things or not as a parent it doesn't matter we still need to be aware of what's going on so that we can they can feel relatable to us because it's going to come a time when your kids are like man you know this is going on this is going on and you don't want to be sitting there listening to your child and it sounds like they're talking speaking spanish to you and you're only understanding english and then you're like, well, what the hell? I don't understand nothing you're saying. So you want to be up on the know. And in order to do that, you just have to be really understanding with your kids, understanding of their mistakes, encouraging them anyway, telling them that you love them and showing them, you know, um, incubation time periods may have to happen as a parent. You may have to incubate your kids while they're going to college or, or, or starting to get on their own. You may have to incubate them. If that's the case, okay. But don't just throw your kids out to the wolves, man. It, it's, it's just, it's just, it was really heartfelt because it's like, we must prepare our children to, yes, become independent of us. Very important socially, um, emotionally. Because really, we're not going to be here forever. So it is important that we get our children aware of the independence of us. Very important. But outside of that, we want to make sure that we're encouraging them to start to gain confidence in their decisions they're making. But also be an overseer. You know, really pay attention to what the decisions they're making. Uh, are you pausing on that? Are you making sure this is the right decision? Are you looking at all angles and all perspectives? What are you doing to resolve your turbulence in your life? And these are things that we need to, as parents, to look at when it comes to our kids. We need to sit down and say, hold on a minute, baby girl or baby boy. Um, I understand you're excited and you want to make these decisions, but are you sure you've got the vision in your head of what you're wanting to do with your direction? Because it's easy to get in a trap, man. Look at how easy it is to find yourself working at a job for 30, 40 years and really not have a goal of retirement. How easy that is. And it doesn't take much. All it takes is for them to just keep fueling you with overtime. Right? You got overtime money coming in? Who needs education, right? When you're making all this cash flow. Yeah, but you're in exchange of your life. You're giving up eight more hours out of your day for a company, for a place to, to live. No, that is, hey, Doxy, no, that's not acceptable. You don't give up your whole life for a company that as soon as you leave the job or, or you decide to move on, you're just a number to them and they replace you like this. No, you have to be mindful. That at the end of the day, when it gets to a point that it's like, okay, I am okay with working. And that's fine because you got to have to work for self-preservation. We, we understand that. But you don't want to work to where you are working an hourly job. So that's, that's a bulk of your hours. Think about that. That's eight hours of your day you're working for someone else now. <laughs> I understand that. You're working for someone else. So you're working eight hours of your day for someone else, and then they tack on another six, seven, eight hours. So you're working 16 hours of your day for somebody else. And then what the what what it is is the, the, the sweetness of that is they'll load you up with all that cash, man. 
And it's just delicious because now, ooh, I'm getting $2,500 checks a week. Ooh, I'm getting this. But you're losing on the other hand because you're giving all this, you're giving off all your time. You don't get that back. You don't get the time back. You don't. You don't get the time back. But they're, give, they're, they're giving you all this money and it looks delicious. It tastes good because you're able to get the fruits of different things you're you're wanting to have. The wants, the needs, the 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 comforts right and then you're like man yeah but when you go home you don't have time to do what mingle with your family you don't have time to to really sit down and read and educate yourself in mind you don't have time to meditate right docs you don't have time to meditate you don't have time to do anything and then when do you get to see your kids? When do you get to see your wife, your husband? When do you get to see your life, man? You you really don't because you're spending all this time at a job. And like I told my, my son-in-law to be, man, I told him, I said, you work a job and that's fine and well and dandy. But understand that employee ID is your prison number. Because if you leave that job today, you're replaced tomorrow. If not, by the end of the day, they already got somebody else in your position. So what's your value? So we have to step back and look at our purpose. And that's what I'm instilling in my kids. And I want to share it with you as parents to do the same. We got to educate our kids to really think about their purpose and explain to them that there's a vortex out here just ready to suck the life out of them, wanting to be driven towards their purpose towards their reasoning for being on the planet. And to do that, they have to shovel them down with money. Money is all, oh, oh I got to chase that holy dollar. I got to chase that money. I got to chase that money. I really got to have that money. Okay, and then what? Money is not going to buy you out of an illness. Money ain't going to buy you out of depression. Money ain't going to buy you out of none of that stuff. And most people that are at that job all day long, they don't have enough actual rest when are they resting really because they got to get right back up to go to that job in the next in, in the next couple of hours you're talking about 16 hour days when are the when are they really having the time to rest and really allow their body to shut down and just allow you to rest when do you have that you don't when you're in the vortex of suck of being sucked out of just having a job and getting them just loading you up with all this overtime money. And don't get me wrong, overtime is great. It is. But I had to step back even in my own life and say, look, I've been at this job <laughs> for how many years now? How many hours have I given this job? Man? What am I what am I really doing? And I'm on this gerbil wheel, I'm going around on a gerbil wheel, chasing that what, that dollar, right? And getting that overtime or whatever. But after you get that overtime money, it's like, it's great and all, but how do we actually advance ourselves? How do we get to the next level of our own inner beauty, our own inner peace? How do we do that when we're at that job all day? How do we have a, 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 an enjoy, a enjoyable life with our spouse, our life partners, our kids, our families? When do you go and see your family members when you're always at that job? That job sees you more than your family. Something's off. We got to be mindful of that. These are examples and things that I want to talk to the young people. And I'm encouraging you to have these sit down conversations with your kids because it is very commendable, you know, from, you know, retiring from a job and, and doing all of that i get that trust there, there's nothing more um gratifying to say i have succeeded and succeed succeeded in a job for a long time but it's something quite bigger than that in life because once that job is over once the overtime money is no is, is paid and went and, and it's gone and you sit in your retirement days and you look back and you're like man I could have, should have, would have done these things that I didn't because I was always at that job. I was submerged in my job. I was, I, I ate, drank, and slept that job. 
And now I feel like I got cheated because yes, I have the home and I got this, I got that, and that's all great. But I just don't have the inside fulfillment. And these are the things that we need to be discussing with our children. We need to tell our kids, like, look, I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. I want you to be the best version of yourself. But we got to also let them know about the vortexes out here. Because people are out here baiting our babies, man. Not baiting them with just college and college debt and all that. They're also baiting them with these jobs, just feeding them with all this overtime. And overtime is, like I said, it's commendable. It's great money. But what good is it if you're all, always at that job and you don't have a life to live? It's all encompassing and your, your, your health is failing because you're not getting proper rest. You're not seeing your family, so you're getting you're thrown into a depression. All of these things are happening and we're not talking about why. So I think it's important we sit down and we just look at our kids and tell them, listen, your value, you will never get paid from a job. Ever. I don't care what job it is. You'll never get paid your value. So, in order to get the compensation of your value, you must live in your purpose. Point blank, period. When, when our kids understand that and they get that understanding, priceless. Because they can work a job and be at a job and doing the job or whatever, but they understand, okay, I'm here to get, you know, get the, the, the fruits of my labor to get my self-preservation together. But I also understand there's a bigger piece here, which is me being driven to find my purpose. Because that's what's really important. But again, we can't sit back and think that we can't um, instill in our babies the importance of what it takes to truly, truly be fulfilled in this lifetime. And understand, as a parent, we're, we should be still growing ourselves. Even if we're on the gerbil wheel with the job and all. We, we, it's never too late to evolve into a best version of yourself because you are the prime example to your child. So if you're not evolving and trying to get to a better version of you, then you need to start seeking it out as well. Well, what is it that I'm doing that I need to improve on? Or what do I want to do? What, what's on my bucket list? Like me and my dad always have a joke together. He always says, you know, don't take life too serious. You ain't getting out of here alive either. And so we chuckle about that. But it's true. We ain't going. None of us are going to get out of here alive. So why don't we focus on why we're here, what our purpose is, and how we can really enhance our life, man? For me, being 00071845 at my job is my number. That's my prison. That's my inmate number for my job, okay? So, if I leave that job today, I'll be replaced tomorrow. There ain't no love for me there. But it's not about the love. It's about getting what I need to do to self-preserve. However, understand, I'm living my purpose. And there's no money on the planet that can pay me my value ever but my value is definitely moved in me by me doing my purpose me enjoying my purpose me and me encouraging other people this i love to do i do this every day with no problem without a hesitation love it but again i know my purpose <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i'm wanting you guys to encourage your babies to know their purpose vital very vital and let me tell you something i don't care if they're grown I don't care if they're grown, out the house, whatever. Tell them anyway. Because you don't want your kids to put in 30, 40 years of the job, man. And they just come out of their retirement all bruised up from not having enough rest. Not having enough fulfillment in life. You don't want them to have that truth. You really don't. I'm just saying. Alright? So I'm out of here, guys. I just had to let you know what inspired me to talk about this this evening and to let you know man it's not easy to um parent but parenting never ends it will be here forever as long as you're on the planet and breathing you will always be a parent trust all right and also if you have not yet subscribed to my youtube channel 
go over there right now and subscribe. It's Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. And uh, subscribe today. All right? My son and his crazy fun time with his, his games and stuff. He's so funny. But again, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole signing off. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.